Hello, this is Mr. Huff. Let's talk about calculating orbital period. So in this case, we're looking at an orbit, and we want to know how long it takes to go around one time. So let's just run the simulation and kind of estimate where it started and where it finished. Notice this is an eccentric orbit right there. So that took 234 Earth days to go completely around the sun one time. So this would be some little planet and it's moving around the uh, sun below it. Okay, so let's take a look at this, the period of an orbit. In some of the notes that PLTW provides, they give this derived form of uh, the work of Johannes Kepler. Uh, he followed no, he preceded Isaac Newton. So Galileo and Johannes Kepler came along before Isaac Newton. And Johannes Kepler looked at years and years and years of astronomic data, looking at the movement of the planets, and figured out that the planets were moving in ellipses. And he also figured out some ways to calculate periods and radiuses based on the motion. I was mentioning in one of my classes that um, I used to teach AP Physics, and there is an AP Physics test question where they had to calculate the mass of Saturn based on the, the distances and periods of the moons orbiting Saturn. So it was a, a very interesting problem to work. Anyway, back to this. So this is T, which stands for period of time, and it's measured in seconds, is equal to 2 times pi times the value that arrives when you take the length of the semi-major axis, or in most cases, it's just that longest radius from the center of the central body to the center of the orbiting body, raised through the raised to the 3 over 2 power and that's just something you're going to plug into your calculator divided by the square root of the universal gravitation constant times the mass and while this looks really tricky it's a pretty straightforward calculation the semi major axis has to be in meters the universal gravity constant is this value or unit rather the masses have to be reported in kilograms and the period has to be reported in seconds. Okay. So let's look at an example calculation. We have a satellite that has a mass of 2,500 kilograms. It's orbiting at 3 million meters above the Earth. And we want to know how long it takes to go around the Earth one time in hours. Okay. Keep in mind, you will have to do a conversion for this because I want you to tell me hours and you will solve in seconds first and have to convert. So we have our mass and our altitude and we have some facts about the Earth right here. We're solving for the period of time in hours. We're going to use this formula and a conversion. So we plug in what we know. We have two times pi and then we're gonna take the altitude of the Earth and the alt the radius of the Earth and the altitude from the Earth, add those together, raise that to the power of 3 divided by 2, and close that expression here to here in parentheses, divide that by the square root of the universal gravity constant times the mass of the Earth. So you've got everything calculated in there. If you're not comfortable with doing lengthy calculations like this, Calculate this first, calculate this second, take and divide those two numbers, and then multiply them times pi times 2. And that will give you your number of seconds for that period. So in this case, the period is 9,000 seconds. There are 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in an hour, and that means there's you multiply those two together, you get 3,600 seconds in an hour. So we're going to take our seconds times one hour over 3,600 seconds. That gives us 2.511 hours. So you would put in your answer like that. All right, that's how to calculate the orbital period. That's all I have for now. Thank you for watching.